To greatly ramp up the production rate of Starship in 2025, Elon Musk is building a giant Starship rocket factory in Starbase, Texas. Of course, unlike Starship rocket production, factory construction doesn't have to start from scratch. In fact, Elon has imitated many things from his current achievement, the Tesla Gigafactory to manage the internal operation of his future building. So, have you ever wondered how similar Starship Gigafactory and Tesla Gigafactory are inside? Elon Musk officially revealed a new inside SpaceX Gigafactory that shocked NASA. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Find a way or make a way. If conventional thinking makes your mission impossible, then unconventional thinking is necessary. This is truly the principle that Elon Musk has applied for a while in his process to build two empires, Tesla and SpaceX. While Tesla was facing that so-called manufacture hell, given that just 2,425 Model 3 cars were completed in the final three months of 2017, instead of 20,000 a month by December as hoped, a multi-billion factory was a waste of money. Therefore, they built a giant tent in the Tesla parking lot in two weeks, and inside that tent, they tried to break with standard auto industry practices all along the Model 3 assembly lines. The company's goal by then was not only to be a mass market automaker, but also to reinvent the way autos are made. The same thing also happened with SpaceX Starship in Texas as the Starship's prototypes are built and assembled in crude windbreaker structures and tents. Then, all of them are brought to test, collect the data, and then upgrade. Mass production will be the next step once SpaceX manages to get what it desires on the Starship rocket. That's where Starship Gigafactory or Star Factory comes in. The building features three different heights and is clad in white panels, with black cladding and glass on the front, and extends up to the location of the old tents, original ring yard, and Mega Bay 2. Being kicked off in 2021 as of May 6, 2024, the building has completed its final more or less square layout, which is shaped so around 244 meters by 244 meters. Its glass facade on the top row of the road facing side of the Star Factory is finished. Remember the installation of the piece of glass just began on April 27, but until day 30, the first two floors were almost covered in dark glasses. Fast forward to early May, and everything is about to be done. Of course, there will be a lot of things to do in this super large building, but with SpaceX's current fast working pace, I believe that the factory is likely soon outfitted with all the equipment required to fully produce Starships. At the current pace, do you think Star Factory will come online next year? Say yes or no in the comment. If you find this useful, please give us a share, like, and subscribe. Your support will be a huge motivation for us to release more quality videos in the future. And now, let's come back. After taking a quick look at the outside, have you ever wondered what a Gigafactor will look like inside? To expand the area of the Gigafactory, three tents were scrapped. These tents represent three strings of Starship components, including the top, middle, and lower sections being manufactured parallelly. These segments then were brought together at the Mega Bay for final assembly. Apparently, SpaceX will be continuing the same general manufacturing process inside the new Star Factory building. But remember, that it's just an assumption because the solid walls of the factory enhance the higher level of security. It would be hard to enter inside for more detail, except with SpaceX approval. The factory's primary goal is to mass produce the Starship and Super Heavy at an unprecedented pace in the aerospace industry. This ambitious target has been set by SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell, who envisions the production of one rocket every day. To achieve this ambitious goal, SpaceX plans to leverage advanced manufacturing techniques similar to those developed at Tesla's Gigafactories. These techniques have proven successful in the automotive industry, and SpaceX is betting they can be equally effective in the aerospace sector. The principle here is the machine that builds the machines and think of the Gigafactory as the motor that keeps Tesla's production running. Here are some key takeaways from Tesla's Gigafactories. The first one is vertical integration. Every corporation has the dream of keeping everything in-house. That's the goal of vertical integration. When you control every part of the production process, you have tighter control over product quality and cost. It also saves companies money from what they would have spent on outside resources and clients. The Gigafactory ensures Tesla has total control over everything and can make changes when necessary without much of a hassle. The second is the first principle of thinking in action. 
It's part of Elon Musk's leadership style to engage in first principle thinking. The key to this type of thinking is to always ask why. It's a matter of reverse engineering what many people assume to be true. Just because something is the status quo doesn't mean it has to be like that. The Tesla Gigafactory takes a tried and true process and asks why it's done that way. With first principles thinking, you work backward and create new and better systems. The result can sometimes be something as radically different as a factory with the floor space to hold nearly 100 football fields. Last but not least, innovating for the customer. Perhaps the most important takeaway of the Gigafactory is the potential for innovation it provides for the customer. One way customers stand to benefit is from price reductions. Many modern conveniences we enjoy today would have been unaffordable mere decades ago. The same may hold true for Tesla vehicles if the company follows through with the promises of their Gigafactories. Just think of how much could change if Model 3, Y, and future car designs become affordable to the average shopper. The main difficulty Tesla has had comes from production. The demand is there, but the company can't produce cars fast enough. The Gigafactory may be able to solve this problem, giving Tesla more room to breathe and get their products out to more people. If they're able to solve this problem, they can create more products with the potential to transform the world. Their current initiatives allow them to make headway in their innovation strategy while revolutionizing other industries in the process. It's safe to say that the success of the Tesla Gigafactory has made the operation of the other Gigafactories, Starship Star Factory for example, more smoothly. They apply not only the manufacturing principles, but also the building process from Tesla to SpaceX. In fact, Tesla is using prefabrication as an innovative way to build its factories. Prefabrication is a construction technique that involves the production of building components, off-site in a controlled environment, typically a factory. These components are then transported to the construction site for the final assembly. In modular construction, prefabrication can help produce multiple identical copies of several infrastructural elements in a factory setting. This ensures consistent quality of building components that can be made with similar standards of construction, reducing the likelihood of errors and inconsistency arising during the final assembly. Adopting prefabrication for the construction of its factories has allowed Tesla to significantly improve their construction both qualitatively and quantitatively. They use the technique of advanced framing to pre-cut and assemble building components in a factory, Everything from the structural framing to electrical and plumbing systems is factory assembled before transporting to the construction site. This modular construction process begins with the design of the building which is then used to create detailed plans and specifications that guide the production of the building components. These components are manufactured using a combination of automated and manual processes with the help of either computer-controlled cutting machines and robots or skilled laborers. Once the building components are manufactured, they are then transported to the construction site and assembled using mechanical equipment. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.